for any given integer n positive, we want to prove that there exist n consecutive positive integers so that none of them is an integral power of a prime number. So what is a prime number power? For example, 36, 6 square, that's not a prime power. But 125 is 5 to the third power. That is a prime number p raised to a certain power. That is, we call it prime power. Okay. So 36 is not, but 125 is. Okay. For this proof, we rely on what is called Chinese remainder theorem, which states for this system of congruence equation here, right, and modulus here n1 and to nk, they are pairwise coprime. And a1, a2, and ak, those are arbitrary integers. The Chinese remainder theorem claim that this system of equation always has a solution, and the solution is unique with respect to the modulus of big N, which is a product of the N1, N2, and Nk. All right. So if you consider all the integers, there's going to be infinite many, because you add multiple of big N would also satisfy this system of congruence relation. Okay. So the, the reason this is called Chinese Remainder Theorem because it was first in a book from ancient China. That's about year 300, maybe the 3rd century or the 4th century, the exact time we don't know. But when we translate this problem into a mathematical language, it's equivalent to solve this system of congruence equation. And we know that the answer is 23 and multiple of 105n. Now here is 3, 5, 7 are coprime, you know, pairwise coprime. Yeah. So that's the origin of this Chinese remainder theorem. So here, what I'm going to do is we try to use this theorem to construct an n consecutive integers. The way to do it is we need to figure out what's the modulus, you know, what are those n's, right, and what those a you know, sequence here, A1, AK, right? So what we do is to pick the appropriate modulus and to construct a linear congruence equation. All right, so we do pick two n distinct prime numbers, P1, P2 up to Pn, and Q1, Q2 up to Qn, so two n of them. So the construction here is going to be n equations, congruence equations, x equal negative 1, negative 2, up to negative n. And the modulus here is p1, q1, p2, q2, pn, qn. So notice that those modulus are pairwise coprime because all the prime numbers are distinct. And the Chinese remainder theorem tells us there is a solution. So if x satisfies all these congruence equations, we know that x plus 1 is going to be multiple of p1, q1, x plus 2, multiple of p2, q2, and so on and so forth. So in other words, x plus 1, x plus 2, up to x plus n, we have found n consecutive integers, and each contains two distinct prime factors. That is, they cannot be a prime power. So none of which is going to be integral power of a prime number. So we have proven the statement through the construction. Yeah. So with this equation, we find x and then we find n consecutive integers and the statement is true. Hope you follow the steps and please like, share, and subscribe to the channel.